Hi guys, Nada here and today I'll be taking a look at a new wireless gaming headset from Asus, the ROG Strix Go 2.4. Now I know it doesn't sound super exciting right away because, well, I'm really sorry Asus, but your history of making gaming headsets is a bit shaky. Between some really big and bulky over-the-top ones and some models that suffered from poor sound and microphone quality, you never really managed to make a gaming headset that was really memorable for all the right reasons. Until now, because this one is actually something different and very, very interesting. Now, instead of the usual over-the-top design, it is actually very elegant, it is very light, it is very comfortable, and it comes with one of the most interesting microphones I've seen on a gaming headset. So it's a type of a noise-canceling microphone that uh, can filter out all the annoying background sounds like uh, keyboard typing or your mom vacuuming and even other people having a conversation right next to you. And it actually does that surprisingly well. So even though it would be ideal for using it in public transport or gaming events, most of you are probably just thinking of that one friend. The one friend whose clicking keyboard sounds are making your teeth grind every time you game together and this should be able to fix just that. It is probably a bit too expensive to buy it for that friend considering the fact that you will need to spend 165 euros or dollars for this headset but let's see if it's worth getting if you are that guy. You know who you are. Let's go. This video is brought to you by iFixit and their ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit has all the tools and accessories you need to repair your hardware, whether it's a PC, phone, tablet, console, and so on. It is made of great quality materials, and iFixit backs that claim up with a lifetime warranty. Get yours using the links in the description below. Now, as the name suggests, the Strix Go isn't just a gaming headset for your PC, because you can also use it on the go. It is very compact, you can fold it and carry it around in this little fancy carry case. You get a bunch of extras like a USB Type-C dongle, a USB Type-A adapter and an analog 3.5 millimeter cable, so you can connect it to most devices you own. It works uh, wirelessly on a PC, PlayStation and a Switch and your mobile devices and wired on an Xbox controller or other devices that use a 3.5 millimeter jack. So, the main idea here is that you buy one headset and use it for everything. The sleek design matches the on-the-go idea as well and unlike many gaming headsets out there, you can comfortably use this outside without looking out of place. Now there's some small design details to make it a little bit more interesting, but in the end it's an elegant, light, low-profile design for pretty much any environment. Now the build quality feels good as well. Material choice is well done, the finish is good and it's flexible, so it will easily fit most head sizes from small to large, but do keep in mind the ear cups aren't that big, so if your ears are on the larger side, this headset might not be for you. And the ear pads are also made out of fake leather, so they do feel very soft, but they can also get really warm, especially in the summer. But overall, I personally think it's a very comfortable headset. It is not heavy, there isn't too much pressure, and the little bit of pressure that's there is actually very evenly distributed and they don't really slide off when you move your head. So even for people with glasses, it will fit really, really well. Now the sound quality is good as well. Don't expect an exceptional experience for super critical music listening but it has a really nice vibe to it. There's a decent amount of bass, uh, there's plenty of volume, and it really doesn't have those muddy mids that a lot of gaming headsets usually suffer from. Now, if we compare the SPL Graph to the SteelSeries Arctis One Wireless, which is also a wireless USB Type-C headset that focuses on being compatible with all your devices, you can see that the Strix Go has a little less bass, but does a bit better in the mid section. So it has a good 
all-around gaming sound and it's nice for casual music listening. Now there is also a software package which uh, you can use to you know tune the sound a little bit to your liking. There is a couple of presets, there is a virtual surround option, there are voice clarity boosts and bass boosts. I'm personally not a huge fan of aggressive software equalizing but if you really want to add a bit more bass for example you can do that here. But let's move on to the most interesting part of this headset, the microphone. Now Asus put in what they call an AI mic, which is their smart solution to cutting out all the background noise. Now the idea itself is uh, pretty simple. It should kind of recognize your voice from the background noises and then just cut out the latter. Now AI mic isn't something that is going to be specific for this headset only. It is uh, included in their latest B550 motherboards, for example, and they're even launching a little AI mic dongle that will add the same functionality to pretty much whatever your current headset is, which I personally think is a pretty cool move. They also announced that they will be launching cheaper wired versions of this headset that will kind of have the same functionality. So in a way they're trying to make it mainstream and available to everyone and not just pushing it as a super premium feature on their most expensive product. So well done on that Asus. All right, so let's do a little demonstration of how this AM mic actually works. And uh, I'm filming this uh, using the microphone on the headset currently. And I'm gonna make sure first that the AI is off. All right, it's off. And I have here a mechanical keyboard because I always use a mechanical keyboard and I'm gonna start typing on it. So if uh, we were in a game and I wanted to type something on Discord, this would be very annoying for anyone that's playing with me. So let's see what happens when I turn on the AI mic. So it's on. I'm still typing. Hey guys, not a here. How's it going today? But the sound is completely gone. Now it's not perfect and it uh, changes the quality of the microphone a bit, but it's still better than those annoying keyboard sounds. I mean, I'm typing. But let's try this scenario for size. So, imagine this. You're in the middle of a very important game and your mom, hi mom, decides to, you know, tidy up, clean the house and vacuum. Of course, I mean, everybody can hear that, right? It's pretty difficult to broadcast that to other people. So, let's see what happens when I turn on the AI mic. Alright, so, now it's on. Uh, mom is still working really hard in the background, uh, but you cannot really hear much. You might hear a little bit of a buzz going on in the background, but that is only because you know there's some vacuuming going on in the background. If you didn't know that, you would probably never even know this. So the last thing I want to try today is to see how well it works when you're trying to cancel the background noise made by people talking uh, close to you while you're gaming. So for this I'm going to use a uh, video of me talking to Leo from Kid Guru at CES this year. Um, let me just turn it on. So we're yapping in the background. It's uh, nice and loud and you can definitely hear this. Uh, let's see what happens uh, when we actually turn the AI mic on. Hi Leo! Alright, so now the AI mic is on uh, and you can definitely hear the difference. There are still bits and pieces coming through, but the difference between the AI mic being on and off is like night and day. Now to be fair here, Splitting one voice from another is very hard. It cannot just filter one certain frequency. It really needs to split the recording from the main microphone from the secondary one. So even uh, if the end result there isn't perfect, it is still really impressive in my opinion at least. Now for anyone gaming in their living room with their family or friends around or for busy LAN parties and events, this feature will be great. But what about the actual microphone quality? Now, as you've noticed so far, it is pretty rough around the edges and that isn't something that's related to the AI mic itself, but to the fact that this is a wireless gaming headset. And like pretty much with every other wireless model on the market, there is just a bandwidth limitation and it will never sound nearly as good as most wired microphones do. 
Now, it will be completely fine for chatting in a game, for a phone call or for a video conference here and there, but if you want to record your game or if you want to stream, perhaps, you're way better off buying a dedicated wired microphone instead. And if you do, you could still use this AI mic option with your Asus B550 motherboard, for example, or depending on your setup, you could look into RTX voice feature. Now, I am not going to go deep into this comparison right now, as they're just very different solution. Now, RTX uh, voice requires certain graphics cards and some GPU power, while AI mic, on the other hand, requires you to buy a certain Asus product, but also lets you use the feature when you connect this headset to your phone or console, for example. Now, if you guys think that this little comparison uh, would be very interesting, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to uh, make something of it. Now, since it's a wireless headset, the battery life of it is very important too, and I think it does pretty well. Now, you get around 25 hours at a reasonable volume, which is in line with what Asus claims, and about 20 to 21 hours if you prefer it nice and loud. Now, 50 minutes of uh, charging gets you around three hours of play, so overall, I would say that that's a pretty reasonable battery experience. And I think that's it for today. And at the end of the day, I think this Trix Go gaming headset does most things pretty well, actually. It looks nice, it is very comfortable, it sounds nice, and I think that this AI microphone really shows a lot of potential. It costs a bit more than the Artis One Wireless, which is pretty much a cheaper alternative for anyone looking for a single headset to rule them all, all your devices, but you do get a nicer headset overall. Now, maybe not 50 to 60% nicer as the price would suggest, but it's definitely a bit nicer. So, if the background noise and loud typing is something that you struggle with daily, this headset is definitely something that you should seriously consider and it will definitely be worth the 165 euros it costs. Now, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this review and about this headset. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and hit that bell to never miss a video. Bye guys, see you in the next one.